Hi, I'm Peter Cavanna, and welcome back uh, to our series on why on earth did Jesus pray? Here is reason number one, at least in the chronological order of Luke's gospel. Why don't you turn to Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. This is the story of uh, the baptism of Jesus, which of course is in all of the Gospels, even John. Sometimes John is very different to the synoptics here. They all carry approximately the same version of events, just told from slightly different points of view. Luke chapter 3 and verse 21 says this, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. What a joyous first example of prayer. Now, let's look at it very carefully. The little detail that Luke gives us, not found in the other Gospels, is that while Jesus was praying, these things occurred. The other Gospels speak of him being baptised, of course. But here Luke adds that there was prayer involved as well. Now, I find this just so encouraging, and I hope you do too. While he was praying, three things happened. I mean, perhaps they all happened at once, but three things happened. Number one, heaven was opened. Number two, the presence of the Holy Spirit came down. In this instance, and only here, in a bodily form. And number three, God spoke directly to his son to affirm him of his great love and pleasure. Now, there is a reason why many Christians, now don't be cross with me, but it's true, don't really like praying. There's a reason why when the leader of the church says we're going to have a week of prayer, a day of prayer, a day of fasting, I don't know, a season of praying. A whole load of Christians go, oh no, that's just awful. <laughs> and the reason is because they do not really believe or understand the three things that are found in these verses that we just read. So let's briefly look at them, and I hope you'll be encouraged. Number one, as he was praying, heaven opened. That's it. It opened. It doesn't say it opened half an hour later. It doesn't say that it opened after 20 minutes of great worship. It doesn't say it opened when a highly anointed guest speaker showed up and prayed. It doesn't say it opened when people blew shofar horns or waved flags or danced. It doesn't say that it opened after an intense period of spiritual warfare. It just opened. And it opens for us. When we pray, instantly we have connection with God. That's why... I think many Christians find prayer very difficult because they simply don't believe that or they're not taught that or that's not their experience or the experience of those with them. Often in churches, people talk about how we need to get a breakthrough, something like that. Now, I know what they mean. I've been in many meetings where the atmosphere was a bit flat, but I'm not talking about atmospheres. I'm talking about theology. I'm talking about what's what's true. And sometimes what we feel has no bearing 
on what's true. I want you to think about that. So I know of the joy of being in a, a worship service where you just feel like the presence of God is very near and it's joyous and you don't want it to end. I know that experience. But just because we're feeling that doesn't mean that the presence of God and the heavens weren't opened right at the beginning or at any point where I'm walking or driving or shopping or whatever I'm doing. And I simply say, Jesus or Father, immediately, immediately, the heavens are opened. There are whole theologies that have been around for decades about how we need to get the heavens opened. You know, we want to have an open heaven. Well, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. It's just not the case. The heavens are opened. Some people say, yeah, but doesn't the Bible say that the, that the heavens are brass? You know, that sometimes the heavens are shut. Well, what's being referenced there is a verse in Deuteronomy 28 and a verse, a similar verse in 1 Kings verse 8. In Deuteronomy 28, the heavens are brass because of the sins of the people. And similarly, in 1 Kings 8, Solomon is dedicating the temple and he says, when the heavens are closed or when the heavens are brass, uh, then you can pray here and God will open. Now there, what is being spoken about is, is actually whether the heavens being closed meant that it hadn't rained and the people were farmers. So they really needed rain, much as farmers do today. So if you look at those verses in context, it's about the fact that the crops weren't being blessed by rain. That's what it meant when it said the heavens were, it meant that it, it meant that there was a drought. Nothing to do with the heavenlies or the heavens, as in the presence of God being shut. There in the Old Testament, the word heaven simply means the sky and that it, that it hadn't rained. Now, there, there, there are no demons uh, standing between me and my heavenly father, there's no principalities and powers in the sky. And even if we accept that there are powers of darkness in the heavenlies, of course, that's what Ephesians 6 verse 12 does say. But Ephesians also says that I and you are sat in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. So the demons are not above us. They're below us. <laughs> so as soon as Jesus prayed, the heavens were opened and the presence of the Holy Spirit was immediately there. That should be our experience too. And I want to encourage you to believe that. We don't always feel that. But, but it's not about our feelings. It's not about endorphins. It's not about atmospheres created by great music, much as I enjoy it. It's about what's true. God has not closed his heavens to you. You just simply have to say his name and he opens the heaven and his presence is right with you. The third thing that happens is that God speaks to him. Now, I'm not suggesting that every time we pray that God will want to speak to us in some specific and extraordinary way as happened here in Luke chapter 3. However, there is something that is always true and that's this. When God spoke to Jesus, he says this, you are my son whom I love. I am pleased with you. I think this is also an important factor when we come to pray. When I pray, God has accepted me. I don't have to come. Now, please hear me. I'm not saying there's no part to play when we pray. 
in repentance and, uh, you know, talking with God about the development of our character. I'm not saying that. But that's not how we get into God's presence. We get into his presence through the righteousness that comes from Christ, not through the righteousness that comes from ourselves. Hallelujah. And so so before I've even had chance to say, Lord, Lord, you know I've made a mess of things. Lord, you know I need to improve in all these areas. Lord, you know, I'm. Uh, Lord, please will you help me to be more like you. Before I've even had a chance to talk like that, the word of the Lord comes to me. You are my son or you are my daughter. You, you, you are my child. I am pleased with you. God wants to see us. God wants to have us. God wants us to be with him. And in being with him, that's where we find that he begins to deal with our hearts and our characters. But I'll, I'll say a bit more about that in, in a future episode of this series. And so when Jesus prayed, the heavens were opened without any spiritual warfare at all, without any atmosphere, without any warming up. The Spirit of God was immediately present. Well, how true that is for us today. And there was affirmation from the Father. Oh, if we would believe that, how wonderful our prayer lives would be. One preacher said this, when Jesus ascended back to the Father, he went through the heavens and he left a Jesus-shaped hole there that none of our righteousness or our intercessions are ever going to open up or make bigger. That's why Jesus could say, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. When I say Jesus... I'm instantly in God's presence.